You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host, and today I have, uh, let's say, a fan favorite. Linda <laughs> Worman is back, Old Colony Hospice, and it's that time of year again, close to the date, for the Old Colony Hospice walk slash run. Correct. You got it. Tell us about it. What what is there an annual? How many have you done? I can't. So this is number eighteen. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We're pretty excited about that. And we um, added in a 5K run component a couple of years ago, so we kept with that. So we've made the entire walk and run a 5K. Mm -hmm. And we also offer people a wooded nature trail that's about two miles. And that um, was marked off by the Mass Audubon Society. And mm. it's adjacent to the Irish Cultural Center where we host the walk. So everybody starts and finishes at the same spot, but some people go into the woods and do this beautiful nature walk. Mm -hmm. They don't want the paved road type of event. Mm. And then other folks um, do the run or they do the walk on the uh, paved roads, which is great because it's wide, flat, private, no traffic, mm -hmm. uh, very easily marked, easy to find in and out. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a safe environment too. Uh, so families can bring scooters, Mm -hmm. Wagons, carriages, kids can be rollerblading, skateboarding, bikes. We've had year in years past, everybody brings their dogs on the walk, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, and even families, um, you know, with people who have disabilities come with um, wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they push their grandparents in wheelchairs to be out there on the walk. So it's really nice. So there, it, it doesn't limit participation. Uh, and that's what we love about it because our event is really all about families. It's our mission event. Mm -hmm. um, because it's what we do. We, we take care of families. So um, when everybody comes together, it's the families who we've cared for. It's people in the community, um, school teams. Uh, we have a lot of corporate teams. You know, Harbor One Bank has a team. Um, uh, Bridgewater Savings Bank will have a team this year. WB Mason. So there's a lot of wonderful support from the community, uh, people walking. And, uh, you know, we're thrilled by that. And we have um, one team that's one year shy. They're, they're coming back for their 17th year. They, they only didn't do it one year. So wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and we have a lot of teams that have walked for five years, for 10 years or more. So um, they come every year because they want to remember their loved ones. How simple is it to get involved in this thing? So it's as easy as going online, signing up. Uh, you give a $25 donation when you register. Mm -hmm. And we provide you with a free fundraising website. Uh, you know, everybody talks about crowdfunding and crowd rise and things like that. Well, we've been in the business of doing that for years, long before they became sort of the new thing. Um, so we've always provided this free website so you can fundraise online if you prefer, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and ask people for donations and turn in your money the day of the event mm -hmm. uh, to help us raise money for the services that we give to our patients. Website? Website. They should go to oldcolonyhospice.org, and then there's a link to the walk right there. So they click on that link, and it'll take them to that secondary website where they actually register for the event. So Old Colony, we know, is a nonprofit. We are a nonprofit, yes. What does the money go to? And people sometimes ask the question, how much of the money that we raise mm -hmm. goes to the cost? Right, absolutely. Well, all the money we raise from the walk that day, um, all the proceeds go to the services that we give our patients. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the sponsorship that we raise um, covers the cost of the event so that all the proceeds from the participants help um, provide services to patients and families. And while we're Medicare funded um, for the, the main services that people receive, there's a lot of things that Medicare doesn't cover. We provide extensive volunteer support, so that requires training for our volunteers. They have to know and understand the HIPAA rules and all the things that they can and can't do when they're out in with a patient. So that requires a lot of training. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what part of the money funds. We provide bereavement services, which also is not covered under the Medicare benefit, and that's vital to families, learning to cope with the loss, especially for children. You know, we give comfort care measures, mm -hmm. baskets with books and other tools to help them, you know, deal with their grief. The walk is actually one of our, it's not funny, but it's, it's one of our bereavement activities. You know, people mm -hmm. come together to celebrate and remember their loved ones, and it helps them heal. Um, in fact, I got a call from a woman in California. Her mother died a year ago on May 1st, which is when the walk is this year, and she's flying in. Mm. She's uh, coming to the walk with her father, who's 90, and several other family members and friends, and they're going to walk in memory of her mom for the first time. So it's for her, it's very cathartic, and mm. we really 
are happy that, like I said, it's our mission event. We can provide that opportunity for people to come together. They see the staff and thank them, and they really appreciate that opportunity to remember their loved ones. I had a best friend of mine that passed when he was 46. He was a type 1 diabetic and mm. kind of lived his life the way he wanted to live. He ate and drank everything he wasn't supposed <laughs> to, and unfortunately, in a people sense, did that. himself in. But the hospice is so important before the death, mm -hmm after the death. Mm -hmm. um, point that person out, the, the, the person that's coming in from California, and see if they'll let us follow them a little yeah, bit with a camera because that's an amazing story, you know, all the way from California. Right. And it must have given them a lot of comfort and a lot of peace of mind to mm -hmm. know that there were people there that were helping the family and everything like that. Right. It's, a, it's a, you know, people have a lot of, I guess, misconceptions about hospice in terms of when is it the right time to mm -hmm. bring you guys in right. to do the job. So can you address that a little bit Absolutely. while we're talking about this? Of course. So essentially, if you are given a diagnosis of six months or less, mm -hmm. um, that's when you should contact hospice uh, to come in and start to care for you. The average person, though, it's about two weeks that they let us come in and, and care for them, mm -hmm. which, you know, that they still get the full benefit. We never, we don't, you know, even if it's 24 hours, you get the same quality service from start to finish. Mm -hmm. But to really be exposed to what we can do, so it's not a triage situation, so it's really true end of life care. Because mm -hmm. let's face it, shouldn't your death, your end of your life be as good as the beginning? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. The end result, no one wants that. Right. But you can have a peaceful, dignified, um, quality experience if you do things and plan things accordingly. So by contacting, um, even getting information, if you're not really comfortable with mm -hmm. the going on service right away, having somebody come in and explain, what do you folks do? How does it work? And we provide a support system. We are available to a family 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. We don't move in. Our nurses are reachable by phone. They will respond very quickly. If they need to come for a visit at 2 o'clock in the morning, they'll get in their car and they'll go visit you. Mm -hmm. If the um, situation can be resolved over the phone, if it's maybe someone's nervous or something didn't quite go the way they planned, the nurse will talk the family through the situation. But ultimately, Mark, if you had a family member on hospice, you're the primary caregiver. Right. And there has to be one in order for somebody to come on hospice. We're the auxiliary caregivers. We are there. We go several times a week for nursing visits. Our um, chaplains will visit. We have home health aides that go out and provide personal care. And we also provide the volunteers who can give respite to a caregiver right. to stay with the family member so that person can go out, go shopping, have a cup of coffee with a friend, I, take a walk. I think we're going to do a whole show on this yeah. because it takes that much. So right. uh, I, I want to mis you know, yeah, get rid of the misconception. So just to reiterate, the, the walk itself is Sunday, May 1st. What's mm -hmm. the start time? Real yeah, quick. 1130 check-in, 1230 start time. Okay, and it's over at the Irish Cultural Center in Canton. Different options. Go to the website at oldcolonyhospice.org and just participate. That Thanks for great. being on. We'd love to have you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.